what it, it's earning. So when you understand the business, you want to understand what kind of profits does this business make on the assets that are employed or the capital that is employed in the business. So uh, I went through to um, download last year's um, um, investors presentation. So if you go to Foshini, Foshini's website, you can actually download a, an investor's presentation. So that's what I mainly use. For big businesses, you, companies usually summarize the whole information for you so that you can, as an analyst, you can easily find uh, the key information that you're looking for. So, okay, maybe I might just have to redo it again. So you go to your Google, you type Foshini Group uh, Investor Relations and you wanna use the previous annual report. So don't analyze half years until you understand the business. Uh, maybe you might analyze half years uh, after you quite understand what is happening in the business. Uh, we'll use several websites um, to continue with our analysis. So we'll use uh, MoneyWeb. Mainly MoneyWeb is for screening. And obviously these websites just provide you with briefs. So, so don't take a, anything that you see on a website as a final, uh, as a final information, you need to go to the company's numbers and assess the company by yourself. And we'll also use uh, Morningstar or Finance24. So Finance24, I guess you guys already have been using this with, uh, with Jet. So uh, over these websites, we'll just be looking for some things, few things. Um, what's happening? Okay. Yes, and so then. TFG. Arundan, yes, Jet. May please share your screen. Uh, is my screen not shared? I don't know, but I can see it. Am I the only one? Yeah, thank you, thank you. I can see it now. You can see it now. Mm. Okay, great. So, I thought you guys could see my screen. Okay, you should keep. Uh, if any of you guys have any question, just unmute yourself and interrupt me. It's okay to ask questions as we go. Uh, yeah, I think we'll work with it through that way. So you come to your Finance24, you just um, click on Foshin. You just want to get your resources in order before you start with the company analysis. So, uh, okay, whilst it's loading on that side, okay, it has loaded. Uh, let's go to the investor's presentation that I have and kind of um, go through it so that we can um, understand the business, what kind of a business for Shini Group is. So mainly, you want to ask yourself, you want to first understand the, the sector, right? And in understanding the sector, you'll be understanding the competitive advantages that lie in that sector. So uh, for Shini is a retailer. Right, it's a it's a mixed retailer, clothing, jewelry, and some appliances, cell phones. So mainly, what retailers do, you want to understand whether they manufacture their own products or they buy products from someone else, right? And you want to understand whether they are credit driven, meaning do people buy through debt, uh, through credit in 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 this uh, uh, retailer, or people pay in cash? For example. Uh, when you go to ShopRite, you buy in cash. So it, it's a cash-driven uh, business. You, you want to understand that. And retailers mainly, uh, the way to grow for retailers, it's either you introduce new products, uh, you expand uh, your geographical location, and you, you, uh, you, you increase the, the, the number of products being sold Per, per location that you already have. So that's that, those are the two main drivers. So it's, it's product variety as well as uh, increase in, in, in space, so geographical footprint. So when we go through uh, Foshini's uh, investor presentation, um, okay. So the first thing is that they take you through the macroeconomic environment. So this will just tell you about the kind of environment that these guys are operating in. You can see that they are here in South Africa. Uh, they've quite some, some, some businesses um, 
quite brands that I'm quite sure that most of you guys are customers of. Uh, they also there in the UK, also there in Australia. So you can see that these are the three segments that they are, are talking about on their on their report. And maybe you would also want to understand: um, uh, Do you, are you familiar with their products? Right? Are you familiar with their products? So if you go to the uh, to the integrated report of the business you can just screen through to understand, have I seen these guys' products? Am I familiar with what these guys offer? So uh, let me share the screen right now for you guys to kind of see the kind of businesses that they have. Uh, I hope all of you guys can see. So I got this from the, uh, from, uh, their integrated report. So you can see that they own quite a number of uh, shops that you guys are familiar with. So on the furniture shop, they've got your at home. Um, Foshini itself, so you've got Foshini Soda and some brands are maybe not local. And jewelry, you've got American Swiss, uh, Stance, uh, Mette May, um, you've got your Macam, um, you also have your Spot scene, total spot. So, um, and on some kind of cheap retailers, you've got uh, your exact, the fix. Um, so those are the kind of brands that they have. Uh, and those are the kind of businesses that you guys are familiar with. I'm sure that most of you know total sports, the fix, um, exact, American Swiss, uh, as well as stands. So, Basically, you, you have seen their businesses around, so you kind of understand the kind of customers that go to those uh, to their stores, and uh, uh, and uh, you 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 are familiar with how they go about doing business. So the second thing you want to understand revenue, right? So the revenue is the it's just saying are these guys having business? So you want to find that these guys are growing business. Uh, year after year after year. It might not be possible to grow business every year, but overall you want maybe a three to five year trend to be upward. You want guys who are growing because that's the only way for you to make more money. You make more money as the business is growing. So they've got a, a, a slide which is showing you how they generate their revenue. So the first one is Revenue by geography. So you can see that South Africa contributes about six, or Africa contributes about 64%. Um, you've got your London, 22%, and Australia, 14%. So you kind of understand that their main market is, South, is, is Africa. Let me not just say South Africa. So I guess in Africa, South Africa might be the biggest contributor. But their main market is in uh, uh, Africa, contributing about 64% of their sales. So if and in, in this, you want to understand the potential growth for the business. So how, how much runway can this business have? Uh, if this business is to reinvest its profits for growth, is there still an opportunity? You want to understand the competitive advantage, uh, environment. Uh, are there many retailers who are competing with uh, Oshini directly who could maybe uh, fight with it for the market or probably it's alone in the market. And uh, as I told you, Foshini is a credit-driven uh, retailer. So about 72% of, uh, of their sales are paid in cash. So that's quite impressive. That's great. And uh, about 28% is in credit. So you, you need to understand that they are credit-driven. And that will tell you about how the business will perform during times like now, wherein you're having a crisis, people are getting retrenched from their jobs, it has an implication for people who owe the company. And the numbers in green, those are just uh, your growth rates. So you can see that Foshini's biggest growth is coming from, um, from or, um, Australia, which grew 14.5% on normalized basis, but unnormalized is 58%. Uh, then you'll find your uh, second fastest growing it's uh, London so it's pretty 
much obvious for businesses small markets are usually the fastest growing because that's where probably that the business is expanding to that's why it's still a small market so you can expect that uh for shini was more established in in africa that's why the growth is very slow it's growing at something like eight uh eight point nine percent but still that's 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 where that africa is the biggest growth driver for now and these other markets london and australia can tell you about the future of the business in five years time where do you expect their sales more of their sales to be coming from because the more these small sections are growing faster than the bigger section the more they start contributing more revenues into the business so we already understood uh, their channels so they, they they are growing their online market so as you can see on channels they've got about uh 91 percent of their sales are coming through stores right so looking at how retailing is changing you want to understand that this business is adjusting to the changing environment so they've got they experience something like 57 percent growth in their online sales so that's a that's a good good indicator that the business is able to take their current brands online you want that you want a business that's able to replicate their model and that will be there in the future so you don't want a business that is it's got a stubborn management that will be left behind because whenever you refuse to change you just left uh, get left behind and these are the kind of merchandise so mainly you want to understand the revenue and this one this section here is just helping you with understanding where does what come from right in the business geographically how much is paid in cash how those sales are conducted online and physical stores as well as the contributors to revenue and several growth so you can see percent and it's grew at 23.7 percent so one green light is that this business is still growing still growing you can see that geographically it's still growing so uh, uh, things paid in cash growth right there and you want that you want this credit section to and get smaller why because you want, uh that's when they won't be another uh, so you don't want much problem but 28 percent is quite reasonable and hopefully it will decline you want businesses that receive their that people are willing to pay things for cash Uh, and you can see that clothing two percent those are home appliances i guess five percent jewelry some four percent and cosmetics three percent so and now the question that you would want to ask yourself just on the revenue section you put yourself as a customer you want to understand what keeps people coming back to buy the same products of this company what would keep people to buy uh, from this company. So you want to understand that uh, in in fashion retailing, there's a lot of. Uh, uh, fashion trends right and customer taste you you want to be adjusting to turn out jeans maybe it's too big perhaps so uh, you you might want to understand why is that the case is it that people are not willing to pay in cash is it that the business is no longer growing is it that the business is refusing to adjust to new shopping trends of customers demands and maybe their fashion is just stagnant right they're selling kind of clothes that you would want in 2005 or maybe i don't know 2013 it, it would depend so okay here they're just talking about the accounting changes and what has been happening mainly in the business supply chain uh, e-commerce so um okay the first thing that you would want to you to read through here uh, changes in e-commerce so they've added two uh, additional brands online so this is a positive and a 
sorry uh, th that's a very good positive and 23 of the 29 uh, uh, brands are now available uh, online so that's a good thing they keep on adding more brands online because that's where the future of retailing is you want people will want to end up uh, ordering clothes online and obviously some people are already doing that now so you want a business that's able to to do that are there any questions this far Guys, anyone with a question? Um, Irendan. Yes, Jed. So we have 10 more minutes, you know. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, By it, so it, I should... In 10 minutes, it will remove us from line. So are we coming back uh, after that or we will be done with the meeting? Uh, we can come back, it's fine. Just run away. It's up to you. You just want to let everyone know that in 10 minutes they're going to cut us off. Then they can, re they can rejoin. Okay, okay. Sure. Sure. Okay, um, guys, we can use the next... Uh, Few minutes for questions is there anyone with a question is there anyone who's lost on just understanding the business where how does it make money where does its money come from uh, as well as um, uh, the main conduct for business is there anyone with a question just remember that you guys are muted so you should first unmute yourself before you send through your question uh, hello hello Oh, yeah, no, I, I have a question, right? Yeah. So, so, so far when I looked at the analysis, it, it appears as if you are, you are helping us to understand the business side of, of this company. And now, yes. my question is, uh, how, what's the share performance? How has the share been performing with time? Because you showed us that the, it's growing, it seems to be growing, it's a way of attracting customers. It's growing in terms of locations and, and all of that stuff. But what, what's the share performance? And is it the right time to, to invest in it now because of the challenges that are happening now? That's what I'd like to find out from, from you. Okay, great question. Great question. Uh, okay, uh, some of you guys are getting your questions ready. So what I mainly do is that you want to first forget about the share price performance for a second. You want to first understand the business because if you check the share price performance first, you might get biased. If you should see the share price going up uh, nicely, you might think that maybe there's a lot of fundamental growth there, which you're more likely to be right. But you, 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 okay, in, for, for, for now, you can just go check um, the performance. Uh, so let me just share. So you can see that here on Google, uh, they've got a record dating back to 2010. So basically, the share price has not gone anywhere. It's actually declined. So if you had invested in 2010, you would have probably lost some money by now, mainly due to the crisis. Uh, but the share price has not performed very well. And there might be several reasons for that, right? Uh, so we're going to look for the reasons. Uh, there might be several reasons. Uh, but you can see that maybe you might have not lost money. It's trading at a P of about 6 and your 12 percent dividend so maybe you would have made some money through dividends but not really impressive so the share price has not gone anywhere and there might be several reasons for that right there might be that it might be that uh, usually businesses that are big 
in market cap. So you can see that basically the business has not changed in market cap. It's still around 15 billion or 16 billion, which is probably what it was worth uh, in, 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 in 2010, uh, some 10 years ago. You wanna see mainly with big businesses that are earning very good returns and growing, uh, big money tends to go to those businesses and get invested. Uh, and that makes those business to be overvalued for a very long time. So we're gonna cover valuation, but just for, for your section, uh, you, you wanna understand that uh, the fact that the share price has not gone anywhere in the past 10 years, it doesn't mean that the business is not growing fundamentally. And, and it doesn't mean that the business is not a great business. That's why you have to understand the business as I was assisting with you, uh, you guys with. So right now we can maybe just go to, to, to uh, Finance24 uh, and to assist you, Finance24 can give us uh, data dating back to, 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 to 2010. So you can see that in 2010, let's just assume that people were paying the same amount that they're paying today, 16 billion, right? The market cap for, for Shin today, it's uh, 16 billion, as, as you can see, 15.8 billion. So now you wanna find out the reason why. So this is the reason why uh, for Shin has not, Okay, um, we are going to get cut in a few minutes, so I don't know what is happening with my internet. Okay, let me just reopen our Finance 24 and just go through something um, just in the next few minutes. I hope uh, those of you guys with more questions will keep them coming to your view. So this is what you can see with the business. The business has been consistently growing, but it was overvalued. That's why the share price is not done as well. So both the top line and the bottom line has been growing. So if you check um, now in 20, what is happening now? Okay, great. In 2010, 10 years ago, right, um, the revenue was about 8 billion. It has consistently grown year after year, ever since, until now. Last year's revenue was about 34 billion. So revenue has grown by about three times or even better. Uh, but yet the share price has not gone anywhere. And the profits have grown uh, slightly lower than that. So you've got your profit, a profit at about a billion. Uh, that was um, 10 years ago. And right now it's grown by about 2.6, right? It's grown to about 2.6 uh, billion. So profits have been growing. Revenue has been growing. Um, in my mind, the business has been getting better, adjusting. But because of the strong brands that it has and good returns that it's been earning, big money has flown into it and making it overvalued for a very, very long time. That's why valuation is extremely important. It's extremely important to understand that you can find a very good business that you understand that is earning very good returns, but it's, if it's overvalued, you might not end up making good money out of that business, although it's growing. You can see that in five years, the average uh, revenue growth rate is about 19%, and the net income has been growing at about 7%. So there's been some margin loss right there. Uh, so it's losing margins. That's why there's a huge uh, difference between revenue growth and operating profit um, growth as well. So is there any other question? We're left with a minute now. You can just deal with questions and rejoin the meeting after that. I hope I answered you that uh, the main reason why the, the share price has not gone anywhere in this long and the reason was that um, it was overvalued. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, great. Any other question, guys? Any question, guys? Um, 
Okay, I guess you guys don't have any more questions. So the most important thing is understanding the business and where it's going. Then we finalize with um, whether we are buying or not, which is valuation. So let's just rejoin this meeting in a minute and we'll continue.